In this episode of The Design Tourist, I travel to the medieval town of Tübingen in South Germany, intellectually and culturally rooted around a university founded in the Middle Ages. I want to explore destinations off the beaten path of mainstream travel. Tübingen is what you call a secondary tourist destination, one that resides in the shadows of Germany's more famous cities and locales. As a design tourist, I find the richest, most authentic experiences often exist under the radar of travel. So, let's explore Tübingen. Tübingen is located in the central part of the state Baden-Württemberg. It's a 55-minute train ride from the Stuttgart Airport, and it borders the Black Forest and Swabian Alps. For my visit, I chose to stay at Hotel Krohn a pre-war hotel with a storied past. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, Karen LeBlanc. Welcome, Mr. Thank Just you. Just thank you for coming here. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Your number is number 74 on the third floor. 74. Okay, great. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Enjoy your stay. Thank you. The same family has owned and operated Hotel Crone since 1885. Its current owner, Sabine, and her husband are the fourth generation to run the hotel and tell me it survived World War II and a military occupation. The hotel was taken by the French military, so it was completely occupied from 1945 to 52, and my family still could live in the hotel but they, yeah, they were just allowed to live. So the French owned the restaurant. My grandfather, he was allowed to manage kind of the hotel business, but that was it. And after that time, my father, he decided to refurbish, to rebuild everything. And then, uh, yeah, time went by. My husband and me came to the hotel. The hotel is located at the gate of Tübingen's medieval city center, a short walk to Market Square, and the city's notable attractions, immersing travelers in the heart of history and culture. The next morning, after enjoying a breakfast of regional breads and dishes, I head out with my guide, Claudia Schneider, a native of Tübingen and former school teacher who is a passionate city historian. So what part of town are we in? right now? Well, this is the beginning of uh, the medieval old part of the city. Whatever is south here is the new part. It okay. was built after 1820, but all the rest here is very, very old. We start our day with a walk along the Neckar River on an island flanked by sycamore trees. So tell me about this river. Well, uh, it starts in the, near the Black Forest and goes uh, through Heidelberg uh -huh. into the Rhine. The morning fog lifts, revealing a surreal scene of half-timbered houses lining the riverbank. The Neckar River is the social center of the city. In the warmer months, punt boats fill the river carrying locals and sightseers. Okay, so we call them punts uh -huh. because you need a long pole to move the boat. So what is the season for the punts? Uh, depending on the weather, sometimes they start end of March mm -hmm. yeah. and then it goes until November. Tübingen is known for its philosophers and poets, including Friedrich Holderling, who lived in the Yellow Tower across the river until his death in 1843 tormented by mental illness, yet prolific in his poetry. The Hollering Tower is open for tours after undergoing an extensive renovation. And he first came to Tübingen at the age of 18 to study Protestant theology, together with his famous roommates Schelling and Hegel, the philosophers. Along the Neckar River, you can see remains of the city's medieval wall. The ending Ingen in Germany, like Tübingen, Reutlingen, Böblingen, always refers to an Al Alemannic foundation dating back to the 6th century. Oh, wow. And we also have traces of Roman and Celtic settlement here. Tübingen began to flourish with the founding of its university in 1477 as one of the oldest in Germany. The university is the economic engine 
A third of the population is university students, giving Tübingen a youthful energy, where all ages easily mix in cafes and nightclubs, keeping everyone young at heart. Because of the many students, Tübingen is a very young, a very active city. Mm -hmm. Every day, countless lectures, seminars, concerts, open air festivals, flea markets, and city parties take place. And Tübingen is also a small cultural center here in southern Germany. And so we head to the castle which houses the university's Museum of Ancient Cultures. Here, I have the rare opportunity to experience up close Ice Age figurines designated UNESCO World Heritage. We film them in a dark room to prevent light and heat from damaging the 60 artifacts. So these little objects are the most precious ones in our museum because they are 40,000 years old, the oldest pieces of art worldwide. And since 2017, they are UNESCO uh, World Heritage. The carved mammoth ivory figurines were discovered in 1931 in a cave in the Swabian Alps bordering Tübingen. The museum also has an extensive collection of artifacts from ancient Greece and Egypt, as well as archaeological findings from the university's ongoing digs in the Swabian Alps. In the museum basement, I check out a huge wine barrel crafted of oak in 1549. Apparently, large wine barrels were a status symbol back in the day. Ours is really the oldest of these giant barrels. So this, this barrel is, is in the Guinness Book of World Records. Because it's the oldest giant yeah. barrel left from that time. The other ones, there were a lot of them on every house, nobility, mm -hmm. they had one of these things, but they were all destroyed because they had no practical use. Sure. If you were wealthy, you yeah. could build yourself a very large wine barrel and show it off to your friends. Oh. <laughs> As I finish this tour of the 16th century castle, I notice a plaque on the doorway commemorating the discovery of DNA in the castle kitchen. As I leave the castle, I soak up its bird's eye view of the Necker Valley, the Swabian Alps, and the red rooftops of the lower town. 1491. Wow. Wow. I love the half-tempered houses. Yeah, me too. They, they have this like, they look like something out of a storybook. Yeah. It reminds me of Hansel and Gretel. Walking the old town's storybook streets lined with medieval half-timbered houses, I felt like a time traveler in two dimensions at once, one foot in the Middle Ages, yet another firmly grounded in modern day. 89% of the Tübingen houses uh, used to be half-timbered houses, but all of a sudden, around 1820, the spirit and the taste of the time changed completely. So they covered lots of the walls with plaster. The wood construction is called the Tübingen Man. So look at me, <laughs> I look like this construction, yeah? <laughs> and it's supposed, it is supposed to be very strong holding everything, and those are wood nails. We stop to admire the architecture of the Burst Building, a pink structure built in the half-timber style. This is where the Tübingen University began? Exactly. This is the first house that was built for the newly established university in 1480. So Earl Eberhard founded the university here 1477. We arrive at the Market Square, anchored by City Hall built in 1435. It's a popular place for civil wedding ceremonies. And on this day, a bride and groom pose for pictures on the balcony underneath the city's iconic astronomic clock that has been keeping time since 1511. You got married here. Yes. I was on this balcony with my husband and all my friends, much more than <laughs> we are waiting with champagne and rice. It's lunchtime, so we head to a restaurant that is a protected historic monument in the old town, serving regional cuisine and Swabian specialties. The restaurant opened in 1890 and was a popular gathering spot for poets and philosophers. Today, you can admire its original decor with remarkably well-preserved wall murals painted by the royal court painter and the restaurant's etched glass windows. <laughs> All right. So good. 
For lunch, we order lentil curry, and of course, I order dessert, a sweet treat Germany is known for. Apple strudel. Claudia orders a regional dish from the Black Forest. It is deer. And this is, is this a regional cuisine? It's very regional. With Preisel beer, this is kind of cranberry. You have to try it. I will. Next, we head out to shop design finds and local handcrafts. So Tübingen is known for having all kind of tiny little private stores. Right. So we don't have big department stores or chains. The town has one of only three feminist bookstores in Germany, so of course I had to check it out. And I brought along my videographer, Chris, even though it's a woman-only establishment. Why just have only literature written by women? Because uh, women's literature still needs a place where it's visible, mm -hmm. and we founded this bookstore 40 years ago. And at that time, women's literature was hardly anywhere. Right. All along we had, I mean, both motivations. Mm -hmm. Have a place for women's books and present them in a way you can't find in other bookshops, but also have it as a meeting place. It is also, all those years, a women-only place for connecting, for, you know, coming up with new ideas. It, well, except for Chris, my camera guy. Yes, you made and, an exception and, today. Right, nowadays, we do keep it a little uh, different also because there are, I mean, things right. have changed in, in 40, 40 years and there are young men or there are men now who are feminists. I believe Chris believes feminism is a way to make the world better, right, Chris? He wouldn't say any different right now in the company. He's outnumbered. Sure. <laughs> no, no, truly from his heart. Yeah. I think what you're doing is amazing. Next, we visit the shop of a master watchmaker, Marcus Holderman. He's a master craftsman who learned watchmaking from a school in the Black Forest. So how long has your shop been here in the city? Uh, this shop is here 30 years. Holderman's watch shop is known for its artistic clocks that run on antique movements. High noon shows you the time where it's in the world high at 12 o'clock. Now it's here, 12 o'clock. Oh my goodness. Yes, it turns uh, for 20, 24 hours, it turns one time. And uh, yeah, so it can look like this. See? Yeah. yeah? <laughs> How long does it take you to make a clock like this? Oh, yes, it needs um, three weeks. This is the Hölderlin clock. It's a picture who shows you the time. So how does it do that? Yeah, the, the hour you can see on the position of the moon or the sun. At 12 o'clock, it's uh, here, mm -hmm. and then it goes down. At 6 o'clock, it, it, it goes down there, and there's a, there, and the moon comes up. The watchmaker also handcrafts limited edition wristwatches that are only found in his shop. Every culture has its own heritage of craft. In Germany, an ideal introduction to locally made products that tell the legacy of its people and place can be found at Christmas time in the many Christmas markets hosted by cities across the country. I timed my trip to Tübingen a week before Christmas when the city is bustling with Christmas markets. They are a treasure trove of local design finds and handcrafts. A visit to the Christmas markets of Germany has always been on my bucket list. I've written about it for magazines and I'm finally here. This is a place to discover local artisan handicrafts and regional treats. So are you ready? Let's go shopping. Here's a little behind the scenes peek at how we put our shows together. There's Chris Fletcher. He's our show's co-producer and videographer, and he is drawing curious stares for his Steadicam vest and camera. Hi. Hey. So, can, what is this? This one it's a uh, Feuerzangenbowl. It's uh, wine with spices. Mm. Is that a local uh, drink? Uh, it's a German drink. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so I'll have two. Two of them. Yes. So what's in it? Spices? Cinnamon? 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 And uh, milk? A oh, cardamom. Cardamom? Rum. A rum. I order two mugs, one for me and one for Chris, and we sip and shop the Christmas market just like the locals.
Another culinary must at the Christmas market is the region's signature sausages. This smells really good. What are you cooking? Uh, this is, uh, we call it red sausage. This red sausage is something special for this area of Germany. You can get it in the north, you can get it in the west, western part of the country. This is something special. And on the Christmas uh, market, is it something special? You made it in a kind of barbecue. You made it on this uh, wooden grill. This is something that's only made by our club, by our oh. choir. We are a choir. And next year we have our 175 anniversary. And we make a big, uh, we are uh, one of the famous and one of the oldest clubs, singing clubs and choirs in, the, uh, in the, this part of Germany. The ladies serenade us with an impromptu Christmas carol, which warms my heart and reminds me of why I love to travel, to connect with a different culture in shared humanity. This is the light of mine, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, gonna let it shine, gonna let it shine, gonna let it shine. Let's go to the Weinhaus Schmied. Okay. This guy owns his own vineyard and he makes his own wine and he knows everything about wine. Ah. So, and lots of um, uh, people from the area go here every night and have a glass of wine and they meet their friends. So this is a local social scene. It's a scene. very local social scene. So let's go thing. drink like the locals. Yes. <laughs> we end our day at a house that doubles as a wine shop where people gather at its various rooms for an evening picnic of breads and cheeses and meats they bring to go with the shop's wines. It's like he invited us into his home, <laughs> yeah, served so. us a bottle of wine, we're hanging out in the living yeah. room. Yeah. A group of locals sits next to us and unpacks their snacks and we strike up a conversation. So my tour guide Claudia and I made some new friends during our wine tasting. Cheers! <laughs> On the way back to our hotel that night, we pass through Market Square which is filled with Christmas carolers. An unexpected and beautiful This was the perfect end of the day. It really was. It was a beautiful moment that captured an completely exactly. beautiful experience here in exactly. Tuvita. I love the humanity. I love the sense of community. I love the spirit here. Yes. Until the design tourist travels again, stay tuned and stay inspired.